profiling, we can start now. Um, do we want to wait for the the testing? It's okay. Apa? Yeah, uh, I think everything is okay. Okay, all right. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome. Welcome to the webinar of today. I am Eileen Tan from the Center for Marine and Coastal Studies, CIMEX, USD Science Malaysia, your host for today's webinar entitled Future Friend or Foe, Handling Our Relationship with Jellyfish in Southeast Asia. The webinar is brought to us by the network of the Intergovernmental Oceanographic Commission of UNESCO Subcommission for the Western Pacific, commonly known as IOC Westpac, Penang State Government, University of Science Malaysia, University of Malaya, Chiang Mai University, Thailand, Li Kong Chiang Nat Nat Natural History Museum of Singapore, Daha Pusada Hospital East Java, Indonesia, Toxinology Society of Indonesia, Philippines College of Emergency Medicine, Remote Event Nomination Consultancy Services, REX as ASEAN, and Malaysian Society of Toxinology. All of these organizations believe that that, that is very important to share information about jellyfish with the public and create awareness. Therefore, these organizations under the platform of IOC Westpac have come together to present this two hour of sharing with all of you. Before we begin, here are some housekeeping rules. Members of the audience with questions can type the questions in the chat box and we will address all questions if possible together after all the speakers have presented. Please keep your microphone switched off at all times. Thank you for your cooperation in advance. The, this webinar will be recorded. Now, let me have the honor to introduce the moderator for this webinar. Ms. Ifa Issa is a scientific officer and, cu and curator in the Lee Kong Chiang Natural History Museum within the National University of Singapore, NUS. Her curiosity in jellyfish has led her wandering heart to the Westpac Hanfu Jellyfish Workshop two years ago. She has learned and passed on knowledge of the Meduso Zone as far within her limits ever since. Her budding professional interest lies in taxonomy of jellyfish and she hopes to improve the local jellyfish scientific collection for the future. With this, I pass the session to Ifa. Ifa, please take over the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Eileen, for the wonderful introduction to me and the Westpac Hangful Jellyfish family. Kudos to Uha and her team for making this happen. Now, onto the subject in question. Jellyfish, gelata, sea jellies, uburubur, kurage, shuimu, mengra prune. They are referred to by many names. Gelatinous sea plankton are significant players of nature's living, pulsating, intricate fabric. Since the Cambrian era, they have existed long before we humans even have. They are subjects of beauty, of mystery, and awe, perpetuating curiosity to those who care to notice. Notice them as crunchy delicacies on our plates. Notice them beached on our shores. Notice them as pulsing hot beads in the aquariums and the seas around us. They are not mere individuals and not mere blooms or aggregations as we would superficially observe, but ecosystems on their own and mediums of life. Their symbiosis and connections with algae, bacteria, fish, echinoderms such as brittle stars, crustacea such as isopods or even juvenile true crabs, and other gelatinous counterparts are fascinatingly complex, and we have only scraped the surface of the iceberg in understanding their existence and role in our lives. However, jellyfish have also presented a multitude of inconveniences in human establishments and have the potential to hurt us when we come in contact with them. So that's what this webinar is really going to be about. How can we manage this relationship as individuals, as countries, and as networks across the region? This will be a conversation of whether or not jellies will be a future friend, a future foe, or is the relationship going to be a lot more complicated than that? Today, we are extremely lucky to have with us a fantastic multidisciplinary lineup 
of esteemed speakers from the region. And I'm extremely honored to be here witnessing this event and moderating the dialogue. I thank each and every one of you who have come to join us. Without further ado, allow me to introduce our very first speaker, Dr. Mohammad Rizman Edid. Dr. Rizman is currently a senior lecturer in the Institute of Ocean and Earth Sciences, University of Malaya, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. His research projects mainly focus in providing baseline information on diversity and ecology of terrestrial and marine organisms. Most studies employ the molecular genetic techniques such as DNA sequencing for DNA barcoding of resources in natural ecosystems and the application of phylogenetics to answer evolutionary questions. He is also considered the authority of jellyfish biodiversity and ecology in Malaysia, which he began researching since 2010. He has led several national and internationally organized expeditions for biodiversity surveys in marine parks and marine protected areas of Malaysia. He is actively involved in polar research looking into the response and adaptation of climate change on tropical marine fungi and polar fungi. Today, Dr. Rizman will be presenting on the diversity, distribution and ecology of jellyfish, insights from coastal surveys in Malaysia. Dr. Rizman, please. The floor is yours. Thank you, Ifa, for that very uh, kind and generous introduction. And um, I hope for the next 20 minutes, I'll be able to do some justice, um, not only just for the scientists, but also perhaps for the general public um, in order to introduce uh, us all uh, about um, uh, jellyfish. So. Let me share uh, my screen. So can we see can you see the screen? Yep, the slide. All right. So thank you very much. So, um, so as as we know, jellyfish is a very interesting organism, and and I think so far in in uh, in in the world, it is still considered to be underestimated, and yet uh, it is one of the oldest organisms, and. Um, and I think around about 300, um, 338 to 383 species uh, estimated uh, globally. But I think based on worms and also uh, information by Collins et al. in 2020, there's only about 221 recognized species. And, um, and a lot of uh, most of these species are yet to be discovered, and some studies have shown that a lot of these undiscovered species could be found most probably in the Indo-Pacific region, where we all in Southeast Asia is, is also included in. Right. So when we look into uh, Malaysia's situation, um, uh, I started Dr. Rizman, this. Dr. Yes. Rizman, sorry, can you switch it to slide? Because we can see your next slide. Thank you. Ah, okay. How do I? Display settings. Display settings. Um, is it swap presenter? Is it? Yes. Okay. Yep, that's perfect. All right. Okay. Right. So for Malaysia, uh, there's been very few studies that has been uh, been uh, conducted in Malaysia, and as I started this uh, work uh, ten years ago, there's very little uh, documentation, and it was very difficult for us to. Uh, to compare or to verify some of this information. In fact, a lot of um, 
uh, surveys that has been done, yeah, marine biodiversity surveys, has often missed out jellyfish in their uh, surveys, in their studies. Um, and one thing that I would like to highlight is also that uh, Malaysia is also one of the important exporters of jellyfish, edible jellyfish back then. And unfortunately, uh, there wasn't any documentation or even um, the species were not identified uh, even back then. So the problem usually is because um, many of these species uh, were not uh, properly identified or I think there was no expertise at that, at, at that time to identify them. And again, um, there are a lot of morphological variation and many times we noted that there's a lot of misidentification and, and also sometimes it's difficult to consistently obtain uh, certain species uh, as uh, some of them are quite seasonal. And this in, in general, um, made the study uh, a little bit more challenging. Uh, it is only also about 10 years ago that suddenly there was a lot more uh, reports about um, blooms uh, clogging up uh, power stations and uh, biofouling in uh, fish uh, in fish cages and also um, cases of uh, human mortality yeah, due to jellyfish stings. And these somehow created this, this sort of impetus to, to start studying jellyfish in, in, Malaysia, in Malaysia. So when we started to look back into some of available data, most of them were uh, taxonomic, uh, toxicological data or uh, toxicological studies whereby a lot of the species were not uh, properly identified. So based on that um, sort of knowledge gap, um, one of the earlier works that I've done was to start off some kind of a sampling uh, or a survey uh, which we started with a few of my students back in 2008 and 2010 um, to look into what are the species that we can find in, uh, in Malaysian waters. Yeah, so we try to obtain them from the Straits of Malacca, South China Sea, and, um, and if we had the opportunity um, to also obtain some uh, from Sulu Sulawesi Sea. And we try to identify them morphologically uh, based on cramp uh, and also using some molecular genetic techniques, yeah, sequencing, and, then, and uh, we try to use several genes for that. And from this initial preliminary survey, uh, we sort of documented 12 jellyfish species, and out of these uh, jellyfish species, um, eight were typhozoans and two were actually hypozoans. And of course, if you notice in this map, again, uh, because I'm based in Peninsular Malaysia, so most of the data is more skewed to Peninsular Malaysia. Um, so it doesn't mean that they don't exist um, elsewhere in, um, in other parts of Malaysia. So um, I think this was one of the first uh, few uh, documentation of the box jellyfish. Uh, so we found uh, at this time, we couldn't identify them uh, to the species level. So we just identified them as Morbaka. And the other one uh, is Chiropsoides brittendechki. And actually we also had um, molecular data for this as well. Other Skyphozoans that we uh, able to find and identify uh, were Acromitus plagellatus, Catostylus down sandy, uh, Chrysora chinensis. And then again, um, at that time, even then, I also made a mistake in that 
previous publication, we identified it as Cephia Cephia, and later on, uh, we decided to correct it as Neutrous uh, Stoma. Another species, um, the edible jellyfish, Lobonomoides robustus, and uh, the lion mane, um, which we haven't identified to the species level yet. Um, so we only identified it as cyanea. And others, such as mastigias, and uh, we also have Pyloriza putata. And uh, the two more um, famous uh, Ropilema, which are quite abundant in the, and also seasonal, uh, Ropilema hispidum and Ropilema esculentum, which is also an edible jellyfish. And based on that initial morphological work and coupled with molecular data, and I think it is also with the molecular data that helped us uh, to compare some of our uh, sequences with those which were already found in um, other parts of, uh, of the world. So in order to establish whether there is any difference between, um, you know, uh, jellyfish found in the Pacific uh, versus those which are found in the Atlantic. So there are some differences that we managed to find. Um, here, I just show you some example, uh, just using the CO1. So some of the sequences are able to be identified. But then again, um, I think at this particular time, not many people um, sequence their jellyfish. So database uh, was still lacking in terms of jellyfish sequences, which we could use to compare. Um, again, uh, for this, um, I was only able to identify it as Mobaka. I think physically, uh, morphologically, we can identify them as Mobaka, but I could not um, identify the species at this particular point of time because there's no other sequences of Mobaka at that time. And um, following that, I think. Um, we also did um, the second um, sort of phase of a survey, whereby in 2010 until 2015, um, what we wanted to do is to go back and look into those kind of uh, samples to do more intensive um, and extensive surveys compared with um, literature search. You know, uh, because at that time people are starting to publish, and then we are able to look into uh, lots of uh, records and literature, and also to, to, to try to consolidate uh, some of this information. So based on this, um, we had more or less uh, looked into like 37 coastal sites in Malaysia, where we know zones were known to occur. And basically, uh, the black circles indicate um, sites which we actually went and observed and also collected samples. And um, the ones with squares are actually those sites that we tend to do more um, sort of monthly monitoring. And white triangles um, are only those uh, sites which are only documented in literature, but we would not able to uh, visit uh, or conduct any surveys. All right. So for those um, sites whereby we do the back net surveys, so this is what the back nets look like. So usually depending on the tide whereby the jellyfish would be trapped in those uh, nets so we're able to collect them so based on this <clears throat> this more current i would say more current surveys um we found that um there's about 20 species that were uh, identified and verified and um, 14 other species were not verified 
or at least could be identified only up to the genus level. So those that we I sort of circled in, in purple, those are the 14 unverified species. But from that survey, we actually found um, uh, two species which uh, from literature have mentioned um, Cephia octostila and uh, Mastilla sideria. However, these two has, has not been observed for the last 100 years. So we don't know whether they're still uh, in existence or not. Uh, but from this survey particularly, uh, we managed to uh, obtain a new record, uh, Vesuriga anadiomeni for Malaysia, and also um, uh, Lobonimoides robustus, which most of the time, uh, it is not the first record for Malaysia, but we are able to find it on the east coast of peninsula Malaysia. Okay. So these are some of the pictures of um, some of the more common uh, species again from this uh, more current uh, sampling. And uh, this is sort of the distribution based on um, areas uh, that are found in Western Peninsula Malaysia or Eastern Peninsula Malaysia, Southern Peninsula Malaysia, which is uh, in the border across uh, with Singapore, and also uh, between Sabah and Sarawak, which is more in, in the Bornean, Bornean side. And <clears throat> If you notice that, again, um, perhaps most of the, the, the survey is more biased towards Peninsula Malaysia. Um, so it doesn't mean that it may not occur, but so far this is what we are reporting. And, and one thing that we could also see is that a lot of the western uh, side of Peninsula Malaysia um, the environment tends to be much more uh, mangrove and also sort of more uh, muddy uh, environment, uh, a lot more sediments, whereas parts of the eastern peninsula Malaysia are much more sandy uh, type areas. And also most of the coral uh, reef areas are also located more in the eastern peninsula Malaysia. So. So we had some some analysis on that. So uh, we are still trying to see if if there is any differences in terms of um, uh, preference in terms of habitat between uh, different types of species in, in this type of environment. And. Um, in, during that survey as well, we tried to establish whether um, do these uh, some of these species do we consider them as 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 we have, as the topic says friends or foe, so whether they have a positive impact or negative impact, and which species probably uh, there's some um, benefit that we can uh, exploit from them, and so usually. Um, a lot of the problems um, are highlighting issues about uh, their presence can impede uh, tourism and venomization, yeah, uh, blocking the power plant operations. But other than that, some of these species have um, are, are useful or beneficial, especially in fisheries and also in the aquarium trading especially for some of the tropical species are known to be exported for uh, the aquarium trade. Dr. Rasman, five more minutes. All right. So, <clears throat> so here are some um, information about uh, chronological jellyfish bloom incidents in Malaysian waters. So it's not a list of everything, but again, uh, talking about some of the um, information that we have through uh, media and also uh, and any other documentations, um, some of this, the, um, the incidents, especially when it deals with 
um, jellyfish stings or lethal stings, uh, many of them are not uh, identified. And we suspect that most of these situations would probably be uh, box jellyfish. Um, okay, so these are some studies. And other than that, um, by doing all these kind of um, surveys, um, it is also important to note that if we have the opportunity to obtain many samples or doing some population studies, um, it does improve in terms of understanding the range of variation that we are able to find. So some of these uh, studies uh, whereby we have a lot more samples of Lignorhiza malayensis, and therefore uh, we are able to uh, provide a little bit more information about the species uh, characteristics compared to those previously described because they had only very few samples. And again, um, you know, we can also try to look uh, as part of a way of trying to understand uh, blooms. Uh, it will be also interesting to look into the population, whether the populations are different, yeah, particularly uh, when they're separated uh, by land mass or the oceans are not uh, connected. And um, so we have some um, evidence to show that some of these populations can be uh, quite different or morphologically uh, different. So based on trophic ecology, um, I think it is also just recently started for, for most of us here. Um, and uh, some of them, uh, we're focusing more on trophic ecology, and we found that uh, some species are much more uh, considered as a copepod feeder, or uh, some are copepod and macrozooplankton feeders, and some species also um, are much more mixed in their uh, feeding habits. And these are based on st their stomach content. And also, we have uh, done a little bit on uh, stable isotope analys analysis. And, <clears throat> and a lot of the information tells us that they are, <clears throat> excuse me, quite high in the trophic yield. And, and somehow, um, they are sort of um, connecting uh, um, between uh, the feeding of um, Microbentos yeah, is one of the most more important uh, food source as what we previously thought that probably since they occur in mangroves, uh, initially we thought they might be eating a lot more of the mangrove detritus, but apparently uh, our data doesn't seem to show this. So in summary, uh, I think um, what the study has provided is actually some kind of a up-to-date checklist, which again uh, could be very useful for our neighboring countries, especially in uh, Southeast Asia, uh, to begin uh, and start to uh, do some cross-referencing uh, and cross-checking on their samples. And of course, um, and, and, and we will benefit from all of this um, uh, collaboration. And again, as I said, um, even in Malaysia, uh, waters in Sabah and Sarawak are still not being sampled. And therefore, um, these are uh, opportunities for future work that needs to be done. And, um, and I think, again, uh, with reference to box jellyfish, I think a lot more work needs to be done uh, because I'm sure there's there's more specimens and more um, species which are still not being described. And again, uh, with issues of uh, jellyfish stings, um, there is a need for increased awareness, especially if we can incorporate um, citizen science into this uh, kind of studies. And um, last but not least, um, there is still a lot of uh, studies needed, especially in terms of the ecology, so that we are able to understand the bloom patterns, particularly for tropical species, which are still not well uh, understood. So with that, um, I'd like to thank and acknowledge um, 
<coughs> our uh, our grant uh, providers uh, from the Ministry of uh, Science, and also I think um, our our host uh, for organizing uh, this webinar. Okay, thank you, Dr. Rizban, for the insights in Malaysia's experience and progress in understanding diversity and ecology of tropical jellyfish. Now, yes, we have a question here by, let's see, by Chi Ho. Is the, yes, is the Linucci species described in the study confirmed to be Angriculata? Pardon? Um, if you look at the chat, the she's here is asking about the Linucci, the thimble jellyfish. So yeah. is that so Linucci, yeah. Um is the Linucci species described in the study confirmed to be Linucci Ungulata? Um uh, yes, the species already uh, well, again, we are, we, are, we are not too sure about that. So for the time being, we are following with Ungil uh, Kulata. But again, a lot of this, we still need to do molecular sequencing. So I think that that is, again, a lot of the, the issues that we find. You know, sometimes um, morphologically, we can't really zoom in. And uh, I think... We would like to. Yeah. We would need like a lot of specimens for comparison as well. Comparisons, yeah. Yes. Um, okay, so we have another question by Professor Kaban Saak. He says, in your opinion, which is the best identification field guide would you recommend to be used around Southeast Asia? <laughs> <laughs> well, so far, I think, um, again, um, in the beginning, I've used a CRAM. But uh, for the time being, I know that uh, uh, John and uh, Morandini has published a much more recent uh, book about world atlas of uh, jellyfish. So I think that to date, that would be much more uh, an appropriate um, reference to be used uh, for the time being. Uh, but nevertheless, um, a lot of uh, data are still, you know, are being are being um, sort of uh, unpublished. I think I think a lot of the problems, especially uh, in our region, you can find them in maybe fisheries report, fisheries bulletin, and sometimes you just have to dig them up and and look through, and and then sometimes you might find insight about about how accurate uh, the identifications are. Um, so I think for now, I, I would follow with uh, Jams and Morandini, uh, 2020. Okay, thank you, Dr. Risman. Um, we don't have enough time, so let's introduce our next speaker. Our next speaker is the head of the Department of Emergency Medicine in Daha Husada Hospital, East Java, Indonesia, Dr. Tri Maharani. Dr. Maha is an emergency medicine specialist and also an advisor of the World Health Organization on Snake Bites and the president of the Toxinology Society of Indonesia. While most of her past works are on snake envenomation, her interest in toxinology in general brought her compassionate character to the Westpac harmful jellyfish family last year to discuss the impacts of jellyfish in the Indonesian archipelago. Dr. Maha recently recovered from COVID-19, and we are very happy to have her with us today presenting on jellyfish cases in Indonesia, the data and the problems. Dr. Maha, please. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Good afternoon. Uh, in Indonesia, this time is the 1 p.m. time. <laughs> okay, I'm sure the condition uh, about jellyfish in Indonesia. Sorry, I am have masks because I am recovering from the COVID-19. I'm survivor COVID-19. And now I will to uh, share the condition of Indonesia. Please, my presentation, Eva, can you help me to share my presentation? Uh, Sim? 
ओके ओके कैन यू हेल्प मी टू शेयर माय प्रेजेंटेशन सिम इज वर्किंग ऑन इट आई बिलीव ओके या ओके थैंक यू या uh i share about jellyfish in indonesia data and problem okay next it's a map of indonesia and the nokta the black nokta to the location uh jellyfish in indonesia but you know indonesia a big country with a 17 over than 17000 island <laughs> and uh, uh, 270 uh, million people <laughs> and it's difficult to the cases of the uh, jellyfish and neglected cases jellyfish uh, i think many here uh, the problem in indonesia not to the expose because neglected cases Okay, next. Uh, it's map to Chiron Netflix Nari map, but uh, you know, you know the the blue area, all blue area is Indonesia, <laughs> and the other area of Malaysia, Singapore, Philippines, Australia, and the other. But the all Indonesia, <laughs> but. the data and information about cases of chironic flexnery very little uh i am first time to people consultation and contact me about the jellyfish in 2017 and now i have a little information about the chironic uh, flexnery because it's very difficult information and many cases dead in the location and not go to the hospital it's very difficult to have information okay next yeah uh, i have a uh, data from the one of the uh, published data in 2018 i think to the location of the jellyfish but the data is the research from the food and uh, the other the other uh, creation and innovation about jellyfish not the cases jellyfish and i look this time and session and region it's very important to know many doctor and many people because the information about jellyfish very little in indonesia you look to specific location the specific location is uh, borneo is uh, uh, sumatra jawa and the many many island in all indonesia i i think the uh, publication very important to doctor and the many people okay next uh i have many information from the uh newspaper and one of the uh publication from mujiono i think the first publication about jellyfish uh i meet mujiono from the uh indonesia researcher but the information about jellyfish from the a uh, newspaper not not from the hospital and not from the doctor uh, i i think is the difficult problem in my country okay next i have a uh, detection from sick problem in my country one problem is data you know the offer from the seven 10000 island and uh, many area is very difficult to collecting data and uh, two years 
I am to speak many doctor and associated doctor from Indonesia to help me to collecting this data. And uh, 2020, I'm collaborated with Dr. Uh, WD from the Bali. I, I think uh, you know the last year come to the Penang also to the uh, collecting data. I think WD come in this uh, webinar uh, also. And the two problem in Indonesia, jellyfish is neglected cases and not program Ministry of Health in Indonesia. And it's difficult to have data, difficult have to the uh, get line and this the anti -phenol. Until now, Indonesia get line only one, I make this get line with the F and uh, D from Indonesia, the book, but, but not the socialization all Indonesia, only Jabodetabek, Jakarta and the, around Jakarta only. And uh, I think not, not many people know this get line from uh, Jellyfish Indonesia. And many health workers don't have skill and knowledge about uh, jellyfish cases, jellyfish treatment, and first aid of jellyfish. And I think all ASEAN uh, country have problem about traditional first aid. Same Indonesia. In Indonesia, have many, many traditional first aid. And traditional first aid not have evidence base and give many bad condition to patient with the jellyfish. And the sick problem is antivenom not available. Yeah, I, I, I think it's difficult because no program from the Ministry of Health in Indonesia. Uh, I met my minister last year in the 30 December uh, 2019. I hope uh, he make this program. He agree with my information and the other, but COVID come to my country and uh, cancel and all the program. And now my country focus priority of the COVID-19. And I hope uh, COVID-19 and my country uh, will finish. And uh, all the other problem, I think include jellyfish to uh, have to program in Ministry of Health. Okay, next. I have data and information from the newspaper and the media, uh, social media. I have many, many uh, cases. I have the cases is West Java and the East Java and all the island from Java. And I collecting this data to calculate this victim of the jellyfish. Uh, I collecting uh, from 2013, yeah, until now. Uh, but I go to the cases of the jellyfish in 2019. I go to the uh, center of Java, Jogja, uh, the three bits. But in Jogja, 36 bits, very, very uh, many Bits in Jogja. I, I think many, many cases of uh, jellyfish about the blooming in the June until July. Uh, many people come, especially this, this year, because this year is COVID 19, and no people go to the out of the <laughs> uh, home and not go to the beach. Okay, I have uh, next. Yeah, uh, this condition about the many bits in Jogja and the around of the center of Java is the blooming of blue bottle jellyfish. Many, many victims from the jellyfish. Okay, next. Yeah, I have uh, good data. The real data, I think it's the first data from Indonesia. 
I'm co collaboration with Widi and this team from the University of Udayana to collecting and uh, calculate this victim of the jellyfish, especially blue bottle jellyfish in the center of Java and uh, East Java and Bali. Is there a result from uh, web, uh, from the training uh, and pinning? <laughs> I'm collaborating with the WD to give data because I know the data is very important to the my government have policy to reduction uh, cases of jellyfish in Indonesia. Uh, you, you look this uh, data. Uh, the data from the blue bottle jellyfish 2019 until 2020 very high. And uh, I know only, uh, I, I think the all bits over than 50 bits because I have data of less from 30 bits. It's very, very little data, but the the data is very highest from the victim of the jellyfish. Okay, next. And the three problems to the no no program ministry of health. It's the last minister of health. I met her in the 2018. Uh, he came to uh, my university in Malang and meet me and uh, speak about snake bite. And now the new minister and I speak about jellyfish, about the snake bite and neglected case, uh, other neglected case. I hope, I hope Indonesia have program uh, to reduction neglected case because Indonesia is very big country and very big two cases, neglected case, include jellyfish. Okay, uh, next. Yeah, it's the book. Uh, I'm read. Uh, I'm wrote this book in the 2016 uh, from FDA Indonesia. Cover it in uh, include the jellyfish treatment, jellyfish first aid, snake bite, and and the other. And uh, uh, but uh, not not exclusive to jellyfish, but uh, many many uh, toxin, natural toxin and the other. Okay, uh, next. To give update from the head worker skill and knowledge about the uh, jellyfish and the, the, the other phenomenal animal, I make the training. I go to the location is the center of Java, the Jogja. I go to the Trenggale, East Java, and many, many uh, victim of the jellyfish and uh, training the fire guard uh, and training many the doctor and the nurses in mini hospital and the community in in the location. It's very difficult because change the mindset from the traditional first a traditional treatment to the medical treatment it's not easy i, I think the uh, many years uh, indonesia much to the uh, working to the training and the education about changing the mindset to medical okay next it's the traditional first aid in indonesia you look the hot water, very hot water. <laughs> Not 14 degrees, but the hot water. And the uh, salt, urine, tobacco, and the uh, ethyl chloride. <laughs> you know, many fire guards in the bees have uh, give the patient ethyl chloride. It's the cool to the patient, but not treatment. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think many, many traditional first aid in all bits in Indonesia. And uh, to change this mindset is very, very difficult. Uh, Dr. Okay, Dr. next. Four minutes. Next. Yeah, okay, next. Yeah, next, yeah. Uh, 
Indonesia Toxic, uh, Toxicology gave donation to vinegar to the many bees because in Indonesia the vinegar is a uh, 25% to the make the 5% must give the water and the other and I must do training the doctor and the nurses to make the 4% uh, percent vinegar and I, I go to many pits to training this doctor. It's free training, not not the payment from the doctor or the nurses, but free because I know many doctor and uh, nurses in the uh, peripheral area uh, not enough money to buy uh, many treatment to give free to patient. Uh, next. This education was aid, uh, many newspaper to uh, help me also to give education for aid to jellyfish. Okay, next. Yeah, next. I give the poster to many beads. Uh, to I, I give free also to the mini hospital, doctor and nurses and community, fire guard and the other to give uh, poster from me and you, you look this photo because the many bits are different jellyfish and I must uh, look the the health worker and community about this uh, jellyfish in this area and this location okay next yeah and the very big problem is the antivenom not available in Indonesia if I have the the serious problem, I must buy uh, to patient and not supported, but uh, from my government. And I speak to my minister to buy it because many cases death in Indonesia. Okay, next, next, yeah, it's a blue bottle jellyfish. I go to the Indonesia uh, center of Java. I go to the East Java to look this blue bottle and collecting this blue bottle. Okay, it's the South Beach and the Java and South Beach and the Java all a South, a south of Beach and the June until July uh, blooming of blue bottle jellyfish. Okay, uh, next. Yeah, next. You, you you look the many blue bottle yeah okay next yeah it's the uh, victim of the blue bottle jellyfish uh the pain and uh, uh one or, or until five cases go to the hospital because uh deep snow and the very pain and the anaphylaxis also uh because uh, many people give traditional uh, treatment and the wrong the wrong treatment to this patient. Okay, uh, next. Yeah, in the 2018, uh, Ancol in the Jakarta, the capital of Indonesia, have problem because there is this many uh, blubber jellyfish and. Uh, the Indonesia researcher and me give the education from the community and from the media to give not panic from many many people go to the beach. Okay, okay. Next is the uh, jellyfish and the animal. Okay. Next, yeah. Uh, both jellyfish in Indonesia, I think. If I look this map, many cases, but not go to the hospital. Next. Yeah, next. Now, I have the information in the 2008 and 2017 and 2019 have the uh, victim death in the Madura Island and the Situ Bondo, Situ Bondo in East Java, near Madura. I, I think uh, one researcher from the Jember 
uh, give me information, he uh, looks the two book two box jellyfish in the situ pondo. I think if the many researcher to have researcher to a uh, box jellyfish to go to this location and have the many uh, sample specimen and uh, go to the many uh, community to look this uh, condition about the many victims of box jellyfish is dead because dead. Okay, next. And Indonesia have the one uh, one uh, island, the very famous island to the tourism. Is the there are one island with the uh, beautiful jellyfish in the there are one island in the Borneo the location. Okay, next. Okay, next. Uh, one of the publication from the University of Hasanuddin in the uh, uh, Sulawesi have the research about potential for raw material of food and drug from jellyfish. And yeah, I, I know because the many jellyfish in the Sulawesi, uh, I, I, I think this, this uh, research and this publication about many jellyfish in this area. Okay, uh, I think the end of my presentation, it, uh, it's my condition in Indonesia because uh, data and the, the, the other problem in Indonesia. Thank you, Eva. All right, thank you, Dr. Maha. Um, can I ask the floor if there are any questions for Dr. Maha? We have a few minutes to spare before our next speaker. Right, uh, Dr. Rusman posed a question. Is there a coordinated effort in Indonesia to sample from various islands? For example, blue bottles from Sumatra, Java, Bali, etc. Dr. Maha? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, after I go to Penang and meet many many researcher from Indonesia, Puwidi, Masrido, Masrido from Indonesia researcher. Uh, uh, we have to the planning to the collecting this specimen. And now I have specimen, uh, Buwidi from the Bali, I have from the uh, East Java, and the fr a team from the Buwidi from the uh, Jogja, I have my team from Jogja and uh, West Java also. Uh, I, I think this uh, this year I'm a collecting specimen and we have trial to the uh, research to the uh, I, I think to the uh, genomic because the laboratory of the to to can detect it of the genomic. I think uh, if I have information have the genomic from the uh, jellyfish and the other Indonesia have the information about it. Yeah. Uh, Eva, I, I don't have, have it. Oh, apologies. Right. Right, as I was saying to the audience, please feel free to type in any of your questions, if you have any, um, in the chat box. And we will all address them at the end of the presentation when we have the time. So up next, we have Dr. Patrick Joseph Teglau, who will be presenting on Jellyfish Impact to Health, the Philippines Experience. He graduated Bachelor of Science in Biology at the University of the Philippines, Manila, took his medical school at the University of the City of Manila, and had his residency training at the Philippine General Hospital. He is also an emergency medicine consultant and currently one of the board of directors of the Philippine College of Emergency Medicine. His affiliations would include regional hospitals in Tacloban and Bacolod City. Currently, Dr. Patrick is a council member of the ASEAN Remote Envenomation Consultancy Services, steering the clinical toxinology scene in the ASEAN region. A biologist by heart and a physician by profession. Dr. Patrick, please, the floor is yours. Good afternoon. 
to present Okay, so good afternoon. I'm Dr. Tiglao, the Philippines, and who have a talk regarding jellyfish impact of the Philippines experience. So I have no conflict of interest. And here are my the objectives of my talk be to describe the current status of venom in the Philippines and to state the impact of jellyfish things than public health. We know that the Philippines is this archipelago in comprising of three main islands. We have 7,645 islands. Three of these are main islands. And we have a population of 100 million to almost similar to Indonesia. We are number 13 in the list of countries by population. And the median age is The Philippines is rich in natural resources and flora and fauna. In fact, the Philippines is the global epicenter in biodiversity, conceived as part of the coral center of marine biodiversity, and the center of this center is in the Philippines. We have uh, jellyfish species, in according to Light and Mayer, there are 30 species of Siphomedusae and seven species of Cubomedusae. You no know, accurate information on jellyfish distribution and abundance is noted. Jellyfish species used for tourism. In fact, in Bucas Grande, Surigao del Norte, the mastigis and oriole species are some of the highlights here. On the other hand, the economy is also helpful for jellyfish. They are being export as a fresh jellyfish or dried jellyfish. In March, there was a jellyfish bloom in Coron Palawan, and this triggered some of the questions for scientists why there is jellyfish boom. According to one of our uh, distinguished or experts in jellyfish, the jellyfish numbers and appearance of blooms follow a pattern of natural oscillations. Though Palawan are called mito jellyfish. Jellyfish species are the cubomedusature and species that are reported by local fishermen that are more common in July to, the, to September. However, not is this and in South Park in 1965 there are jellyfish stings and in Venomy that includes the major island Don and Visayas. Most of these cases are not reported. They are just tip of the word. Given given um just examples of uh, the cases that were referred to us are those CBRs that are from last July, uh, last 2018 in Cebu, where most of the affected ones are those who, who joined the triathlon. Lapu-lapus species uh, were noted to be lineage species. There was beans, uh, as, uh, which has Jellyfish, box jellyfish, like in the tourist spots like Coron Palawan and the Gros uh, Porton Palawan, Anes. But the primary effects of box jellyfish and venom is due to cardiotoxicity and most of the culprit is Chirinex species, uh, Chirinex fleckeri, venom that may affect respiratory function. Most of cases of death. Our children, one of those are the one who died in Digo City, which is in Mindanao. Another one is the controversial one in Camarines Sur last 2018, which uh, garnered a lot of media attention. And another one uh, was noted in the Facebook, which is in Quezon Province. That's from jellyfish and venoming are being reported through news and social media, and most of them are children, some young adults, and in a pregnant woman, as we had in our data. Um, the more important one is not only the, the physical um, effects that the, this jellyfish thing had done to this patient, but also the psychological effect. We had uh, a lot of data 
from the National Poison Management Control Center uh, located in Philippine General Hospital where we had a lot of cases of adult cases report jellyfish things. From the Philippine uh, Statistics Authority, we noted some of some deaths recorded from 20, 2006 to 2018. Apparently, it's uh, currently uh, picking up around uh, 12 to 14 uh, cases uh, per year, deaths per year, mostly males. This death from endenoming, how, how, how can we gather this data when our medical professionals even don't know that there's death from endenoming? With, with the advent of uh, the anti-venom, which is available in the Philippines, how, what can we do to, uh, to prevent these deaths? All the aspects would include there's a lack of accurate statistics on reported cases. Most of them are being reported through social media or even not reported because uh, there's a downtime from the, the community uh, down to the hospitals where the patient dies and never uh, arrive at the hospital. The second one is cultural beliefs and so, uh, local superstitions. Some of the cures uh, being uh, done to these patients would include herbal medicines, some uh, hot sand, or uh, even uh, coconut milk or coconut oil, uh, even uh, Coca-Cola. <laughs> some, some of them use uh, uh, different kinds of uh, substances just to relieve the pain. And more importantly, even our physicians are not adept on how to manage these cases. They are not trained for envenoming. Must be three factors to consider, what includes, which includes the people, the partners, and the policies and the politics. And I think these are uh, the three P's that should be considered in, uh, in uh, alleviating all these uh, deaths and in preventing all these deaths. World Economic Forum 2019 uh, the Philippines is the lowest lowest rank in health, in the second 100 second in overall, and most of the the things that we are being being done health uh, policies are are temporary remedy. They are just band aid solutions. The WHO universal health coverage uh, dictates that there should be three uh, factors to consider physical accessibility, financial affordability, and acceptability, and should all be coinciding with each other to have this universal health. Unfortunately, in the Philippines, the community still stands uh, somewhat not uh, modern and use these uh, blankets to deliver patients from one hospital to another. The WHO recently released a care system report which dictates that there should be uh, management with the scene down to the transport and to the facility, giving us the, the idea of uh, putting per, the community uh, first because community is the frontliner in the healthcare system. Hence, the REX ASEAN or Remote Invenomation Consultancies uh, through the efforts of Dr. Kaldun, uh, which uh, objective is to enhance favorable, op favorable outcome by optimizing and advocating appropriate treatment modalities at all levels of patient care. We cater in venoming and they consult through uh, either telemedicine or through online messaging, or we advise them to seek medical counsel if it needs uh, anti-venom therapy. The need of public health education plays a major role since it's a source of correct information and advocate for correct behaviors. Um, across the globe, the public health promotion activities focus on health education to influence health behavior of the target audiences. And this plays a major role in disseminating health information and increasing awareness about health education. And uh, in the Philippines, uh, since we are the center of social media, like Facebook, all over the world, we uh, adopted through this uh, educational uh, approach of using social media to uh, gather data or even uh, educate people like the Wild Talks PH, Rex Consultancy Services. And uh, of course, the Philippine Jellyfish Things Project was uh, headed by uh, Sheldon Boko, which uh, garnered a lot of uh, data collection on uh, 
some cases of jellyfish stings all over the Philippines. Have, uh, through YouTube, like the Wild Talks, uh, PH, and also through the Rexasian, we already uh, released some of the, of the posters for the proper uh, uh, first aid for fish things. There should be uh, two uh, for all. seeking behavior. Preventing such as putting signage is, is a very helpful one, especially in the Philippines. Have been seen one, uh, been seen one in uh, Marabot summer. It makes me happy because at least they're taking into consideration the health and uh, um, and the safety of their I think right after we had the community each with this the uh, community of uh, uh, operators already put an age on warning signs and how to um, have first aid for jellyfish things. And then one on the through conducted workshops and seminars in toxinology, which includes venoming. Uh, we uh, trained emergency physicians, uh, and other community physicians, nurses, and is yeah, which things we had a lot of that in uh, in the uh, is this one is called in AVRMT, and we also conducted uh, workshops in uh, southern Philippines in Manila. Um, we had uh, trained a lot of nurse doctors and community health workers as well. Uh, for the pre hospital care management for the EMTs uh, within the Luzon area, we did it in the right. And it was one of the most uh, uh, promising uh, activities we had this in Karamo and Tour Guides and Women. We call it the, the workshop for. for uh, because of uh, reactive uh, workshop, because of the death of the, of the young who uh, who died from the jellyfish, so because of that, we trained them how to do star because the people are, doesn't know how to save. So, on Lambat Island. Uh, where we had trained even, uh, I think, three or four uh, shamans, or we call it albularios. For that. So our, we, we want to try to change their belief on those uh, and even the tropical. Yes, I mean. Life or we're irritated of what they uh, uh, or listen to. And this one is just recently, I think, uh, October last year in Marabot Summer. Marabot Summer is one of the um, uh, uh, most had the most cases of jellyfish thing, venoming, and deaths. We even had some death from from, uh, from a, uh, a young boy. Who arrived at the hospital? Our group also have interagency collaboration. Of course, we attended the IOC West Pack to uh, inculcate some medical um, uh, side to it, and of course, with through the help of um, RP, uh, through the diving commission, which uh, I think we have uh, programs of uh, putting in uh, lectures or workshops for divers and uh, some tourist spots. Also, yes, uh, we also attended some of the conferences and to uh, some uh, researches on case reports on jellyfish, like the the FIMS convention and the 
AMSEM last 2018. So the purchase in the jellyfish on jellyfish in the Philippines would be by Liberty Agatha Densing, uh, which includes determining the species of composition and morphologic characteristics of the Nidaria species in Caraga Bay, which is uh, Marabut is part of, and recording some anecdotal experiences of jellyfish and venom. Another one is one of our experts, uh, soon to be a PhD from, uh, from the University of Griffin, uh, who will just, I think, finished uh, uh, finishing the, the research, uh, uh, Sheldon, uh, which we, he's also the, uh, uh, or the lead for the Philippine Jellyfish Sting Project. So some challenges and opportunities would uh, to consider include the scarcity of data, studies and research on jellyfish and jellyfish sting and venoming. We had lack of cohesive healthcare system to deliver these services since most of the uh, we are an island uh, uh, country, so um, transferring patients from one island to another would be a problem. The availability, adequacy, and accessibility of standard treatment of envenoming, which includes the antivenom, which we don't have, and medications, and of course, uh, take into consideration the training of the healthcare professionals in treating these diseases. Adequate support and funding from the government agencies for scientific research. Most of the researches are uh, not translational meaning we wanted translation research to have good clinical outcomes. This would uh, help in uh, alleviating or preventing uh, these uh, incidences to happen as well. So exchange of multidisciplinary information, epidemiologists, the chemists, biologists, immunologists, medical clinicians, and others working in the field are essential for this to work. And the only thing more tragic than a death is a death that can be prevented, which a jellyfish thing can be prevented. Uh, let's take a look on the preventive side rather than the curative side, and that is uh, one of the most important ones that we consider in the community. References, and this is my Westpac family with Professor <laughs> and Salamat. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Patrick. It was definitely a unique sharing that sheds light on the need to adopt management strategies with a local twist. We have a few questions for you, Dr. Patrick. So yes. Donna asks, how can one be a member of the organization, the Remote Envenomation Consultancy Services? Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, so I think I know this girl. So, uh, the Rex community or the Rex ASEAN are mostly uh, doctors because it's a consultancy services, but we also have a group uh, for uh, non physicians. So, we part of this is, of course, uh, Marvin, uh, uh, Rap, 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 and who all already uh, went to our courses and helped us for the workshops. I think it's more of the volunteerism that should be considered rather than the uh, profession you are into. So all are welcome to join because this is a life-saving uh, community. Okay. All right. So thank you, Dr. Patrick. She also asked, how do you coordinate with the government in delivering talks or information relevant for the public? And if okay. they want to invite you to deliver a seminar or talk about emergency medicine, how do they contact you for okay. this? Yes, uh, for that matter. Yes, yes. for that matter, uh, we all... We all we, we have a Facebook account, the Rex Philippines, or we even have the uh, email account. You can contact us anytime, Rex, uh, uh, Philippines, uh, rexpinas at gmail.com. I'll just flash it uh, uh, later. Or for those who want to to uh, just contact me or message me, so I can give you the, the link. Uh, most of the invitation that we are getting are from poison control centers. So we are currently partnering with uh, a lot of poison control centers because uh, it's a collaboration between uh, the specialists and the uh, uh, experts on uh, on these things like envenoming. Okay. And yes. Thank you. Yes. So uh, Jerome asks uh, if we have any plans in crafting or printing of wide and far-reaching manual on first aid treatments on jellyfish things, especially catering to those in the coastal areas without internet access. Yeah. Yes, I think it's part of the Westpac uh, project, which we are currently uh, doing uh, 
uh, but because of the COVID-19, uh, most of the communication had been, uh, I mean, dwindling. And uh, but we are currently uh, making uh, on the on the on the run of doing the first aid manual, especially for those communities. Thank you very much. All right, that has been really great. We are ahead of time, so um, but we will move on to the next speaker. If you guys have any more questions, when we have time at the end of the presentation, we will address those as well. Okay, so our last speaker is Professor Dr. Lakana from the Chiang Mai University, CMU, Thailand. Being a professor in the community medicine department, just to make sure I'm on, Faculty of Medicine in the CMU is only one of the many professional hats that she dons. Professor Lakana's expertise includes not only advising the community on the marine envenomation threats to human health, she is also active in epidemic response management and emergency preparedness in a wide range of diseases. Tackling topics such as air pollution and obesity are not new to her. Professor Lakana's dedication to managing novel threats to the society has been unyielding throughout her medical profession as an epidemiologist, using methods such as sound therapy, music therapy, and strategic thinking development. Today, we are extremely lucky to have Professor Dr. Lakana share with us on how to turn the lethal jellyfish controversial health threat with conflicts of interest into international solutions. Professor Lakana, please. Hi, can you hear me? So I yes. Good afternoon in Thailand. So I think you have very serious topic now. Just go easy and like watching something very, very non-professional. Uh, first of all, I would like to share um, uh, my slide and I will have two videos. Okay, um, uh, can you see, see like the, pro, uh, the presentation one, right? Okay, um, the key is how to turn this controversial thing. Uh, I have a clue in my pictures, see? And then I will talk later on about this one. So most the one that have a large impact even injury and death, uh, even digital gangrene is uh, among the box jellyfish group. Um, so uh, I would like to present some video. Can you share my video? Yes, Professor, we can see your video on screen. Maybe you want to just press play. I think. ส่งคนเข้ามาหน่อยแมงกะพรุนเกิดมาเป็นนักฆ่าและพิษของมันสามารถฆ่ามนุษย์ได้ไม่สอนนะสิไม่ใช่ไม่มีไม่มีใกล
สงสัยว่าเอ๊ะมันทําให้ตายได้จริงหรือไม่ได้อะไรไม่ได้ทางมันจะติดหนังโดนเลยเราต้องพยายามจะเก็บข้อมูลต่างๆเพื่อเป็นหลักฐานแล้วก็ลงไปสืบสวนสอบสวนว่าเนี่ยมีอยู่จริงไหมนี่เราเดี๋ยวว่าก็พังงันเดี๋ยวว่าก็ตุ่มไทยอ่าใช่ใช่เออของเรามีไหมมีไหมตัวมันขนาดไหนอ่ะลูกจองลูกจองกินน้ำก็เจอทุกปีหรือเปล่าถึงจะดูของมันดูของมันทุกไหนนะมาสมมาสมมันก็เดือนเดือนเดือนไปเดือนกาเดือนทริปตามสืบเดือนเดือนเลยใช่ไหมเด็กนั้นมันลงไปรถอวดใช่ไหมเพราะว่าโชคว่าเด็กมันมันขึ้นมามันเน้นใช่ไหมแต่คือมันมันคายอยู่เลยใช่ไหมเด็กนั้นเดี๋ยวมันตายเหมือนกันหลังจากพิสูจน์แล้วขั้นตอนถัดไปเราจะทํำยังไงให้เขานําองค์ความรู้เนี่ยเป็นเรื่องของการป้องกันเพราะมันเป็นเรื่องใหม่ของประเทศไทยอะค่ะแล้วก็ประเด็นถัดไปก็คือหลังจากนั้นมาเปียกหลังเราจะขยายไปถึงแนวนโยบายได้ยังไงนะคะนักท่องเที่ยวสาวชาวเยอรมันเสียชีวิตก็ถูกคลิกของแมงกะพรุนกล่องหลังลงเล่นน้ําที่เกาะสมุยช่วงนั้นนะมันมีการตายในชาวต่างชาติซึ่งเป็นเรื่องละเอียดอ่อนมากตามหลักของมาตรฐานสากลเนี่ยเขาให้มีการเตือนกันคือเราคงทําให้คนไม่ตายนะไม่ได้แต่ถ้ามีการเตือนมีการป้องกันก็ระวังอะไรต่างๆเนี่ยเขายอมรับได้ค่ะซึ่งการป้องกันเนี่ยเป็นเรื่องที่ง่ายแล้วก็ถูกแล้วก็ประเด็นว่าถ้าทําให้ตายได้มีการป้องกันแบบนี้ได้เนี่ยทำไมเราไม่ทําสำนักระบาดวิทยากระทรวงสาธารณสุขร่วมกับแพทย์ระบาดวิทยาจากภาควิชาเวชศาสตร์ชุมชนคณะแพทยศาสตร์มหาวิทยาลัยเชียงใหม่ร่วมการศึกษาแก้ไขปัญหาการบาดเจ็บจากแมงกะพรุนพิษในประเทศไทยตั้งแต่ปีพุทธศักราช2551ซึ่งมีแนวโน้มเพิ่มขึ้นทุกปีในช่วงฤดูกาลท่องเที่ยวโอเค I would like to switch to my presentation uh... Of this video, can you go back to my presentation? Okay, can you see this one? So, um. The situation when we began over 10 years ago is that it's difficult and complex. Uh, Thailand has scanty data and knowledge uh, for the failed case of foreigner is bring to uh, political and diplomatic sensitive and to media attention. Uh, international media's perception perceive that Thailand ignore and conceal the problem. And also in Thailand, experts deny the existence. All the stakeholders, we have a conflict of interest. The traditional practice could lead to death. And health personnel are misperceived and misdiagnosed uh, the cases. Uh, we lack of expert laboratory and entire genome. So the goal to, uh, the goal to solve this problem is step by step be, uh, based on the situation. So first of all, we would like to prove the existence of litter box jellyfish and then assess the magnitude of the problem and develop the knowledge of detection, treatment, and prevention. And to finally implement prevention measures. So how we did it? We developed an initiative solution and executed it. Uh, the, the leading team uh, comes from uh, Dr. Pachuman Suri Aliyapon from the Ministry of Public Health and I start this uh, initiative solution. Uh, there are five key strategies. First, knowledge sharing, including proving, developing, innovating. Uh, second, early warning and rapid response, which uh, include establish a uh, sovereign system and network and develop uh, outbreak investigation and prevention measures. Third, effective intervention methods uh, include community engagement and practical innovation. Fourth, we ensuring the sustainability. This one includes policy commitment, uh, community and society engagement. All four key uh, strategies need this fifth, the evidence-based management, 
So our target audience include policymakers, partnership and stakeholders, communities and general population. So here are the summaries of the results uh, in the past decade. Uh, we established injury and deaths caused by toxic jellyfish surveillance system. We and established the toxic jellyfish networks. There were three uh, networks, uh, working group, experts, uh, communities. Uh, we can prove little jellyfish and the and denomination exists in Thailand. It affected population in national and international levels. Uh, my former patient, uh, Chiang Mai University student, uh, discovered a new species in Thailand we called Kylonix intrasaxitis gun. We created and produced uh, a variety of educational materials that appropriate for each target audience, include a video clip, and even documentary film shooting from uh, the uh, like Discovery Netflix group. Uh, we disseminated uh, scientific materials via many institute and website, include uh, for the general population. I wrote uh, the blog, the easy language one. And among the social uh, networks, they use uh, like lie or social media. So, for example, here you can see that the they caught the jellyfish and sent to the line. And if they want both and everything, they can download and send the link from the, to the internet. And this one is that we change traditional style of warning sign, which is very scary and know nothing, to the new style, uh, like educational warning sign, uh, which contain how to knowledge and positive message uh, in many languages. And we develop risk communication for target audience, providing seminar training consultation to all target groups uh, that need even general population who uh, live or reside near the beach. And we wrote a textbook. For, uh, the first one is uh, uh, whatever we, we find and experience, we wrote a book. The latest one is uh, in the electronic book. Uh, we conduct many research and also publish uh, to use to convince all the experts. Uh, uh, you can download from the internet. And as a national working community of uh, environmental marine uh, animal, I share my experience uh, my reference, my investigation to the community and we develop clinical practice guideline, which is available this year. And when they have the public concern, I also give the recommendation and also uh, risk communication via, via the mass media. Uh, even for the international impact, uh, when they have the problem about uh, uh, anything they contact, sometimes contact uh, via telephone or sometimes via the email uh, for consultation. And also we support communities to innovate on vinegar first station and stingy net models using available resources because they are the first one who see the patient. You know, even the you call the emergency service, uh, this one you can be, the injured can die within two minutes. So the most important people is the one who near the beach. Okay. So this is a prototype of an uh, Australian uh, of, uh, vinegar uh, pole from Australia. Uh, this is uh, Thailand homemade. It's very cheap, like $7. <laughs> um, the first vinegar, first aid pole installed in Gomak Island. And right now, um, even the communities and many ministry uh, install and distribute along the coast of Thailand. And here is the prototype of Stingernet from, uh, from uh, Australia, which is uh, very good and expensive. So we start with Thailand first uh, model Stingernet. Uh, with this one is a fisherman. And we improve and we share this knowledge to others. And we have the second Stingernet models. This one, if you know, a very famous one, Full Moon Party, 
in Thailand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they have a dead kid here. So right now we have the synthetic model, which is cheaper. And we monitor, maintain, evaluate, and improve this one. And because uh, no one knows how to use this stinginess, so I innovate another stinginess side because they sit on the top or something like that. So easy style. And for early warning and rapid response, we develop a vacuum security technique for identification of toxic jellyfish classes. Because if you know only classes, you can, you can treat, uh, have the first aid for the patient. Uh, when compared with the high technology like fluorescent microscope, the picture from the mobile phone is have the same quality. So even a non-health personnel can conduct this technique and consult me uh, via the social media. So this one is a uh, nematosis from the box jellyfish uh, that attack from the patient. And they uh, take, uh, use a mic microscope and send and ask for uh, another recommendation and advice. Uh, even villagers like fishermen and tra trader can uh, collect specimen for us. <laughs> this is from the, the fish net. And they send to the uh, nurse and the nurse can, can do this test and consult me via the network group. So this simple, we can transfer knowledge uh, from professional to professional or even to non-professional one, very easy one. For sustainable, uh, policy commitment is important. Uh, the third memorandum of understanding has a very high number of institutes involved. Um, Ministry of Tourism and Sport uh, launched safety campaigns based on our experience. Challenge, yes, there are challenge and good practice in established partnerships with stakeholders. Um, uh, if you see this spray, we have no enemy. We turn enemy into our friend and supporter. See? And tourists give a good feedback to us and they accept the risks and appreciate what we have been done for them. They keep on returning to Thailand. Hmm. Even uh, building intervention, they can get involved in uh, and checking the internet. So it's like a fun and another way of uh, give education. Uh, I think people recognize our work and give us many awards. Since 2014, in Good Engagement Thailand Biscuit Study in 2015, uh, and others uh, award, you know, and the last one is two years ago. In conclusion, the initiative solution have five key strategies, and this one lead to a develop or contribute and support to new knowledge, pra practical innovation, risk communication, and policy. Uh, for more detail, step by step of each period, each era, what we have done, you can read from the from the books, which is available this year. And another about three minutes uh, video I would like to share with you. Uh, Can you see the video now? องค์ความรู้ที่ถูกต้องจึงเป็นสำคัญที่นัก Top l a k a n a you have five minutes left. Okay, I have three minutes video. Okay, um, the video is not up yet. องค์ความรู้ที่ถูกต้องจึงเป็นสิ่งสำคัญที่นำไปสู่องค์ความรู้ที่ถูกต้องจึงเป็นสิ่งสำคัญที่นำไปสู่แนวทางในการรักษาและเฝ้าระวังป้องกันการบาดเจ็บและเสียชีวิตจากแมงกระพุนพิษ
ด้วยวิธีการประทบพยาบาลที่ต้องและเหมาะสมจึงควรมีการ I think Professor Lakana is having a bit of a technical difficulty so please thank you for your patience thank you for the questions please keep them coming so that we can ask Professor Lakana later we have two questions yeah I can answer the question during I wait t i n g for the staff to answer การเฝ้าระวังป้องกันพอมีการท่องเที่ยวขึ้นมาเนี่ยมันเหมือนว่าเราต้องรับผิดชอบมากขึ้นเราก็ต้องหาวิธีว่าเราจะช่วยเขายังไงเราจะไม่ออกทางโน้นทางโน้นโดนได้ยังไงบ้างอะไรหรือว่าถ้าเขาโดนแล้วแชร์ไหมได้ยังไงถ้าสามารถโดนต่อมาจากที่นั่นเราทำรู้สึกผมเปิดให้เหมือนกับว่าแยกกันมีพี่กับในพุ่มไฟเนี่ยเมื่อก่อนเขาคิดว่ามีแค่สองคนถ้าทําได้ประมาณนั้นก็น่าจะถึงเป้าหมายในระดับที่คนคนที่เชื่อถือแล้วก็แจ้งได้และสิ่งสำคัญอีกอย่างคือภาคีเครือข่ายตั้งแต่ระดับชุมชนจนถึงระดับประเทศและต่างประเทศในการป้องกันป้องกันและสร้างองค์ความรู้เพื่อแก้ปัญหาและผลักดันเข้าสู่นโยบายระดับประเทศต่อไป during waiting for the video Uh, do you have uh, any question first? I can answer. Video is only three minutes, but I think it's important to give you some idea. ต้องจะให้เผยแพร่ไปสู่ไม่ว่าใครก็ตามที่ได้ชมเรื่องนี้หรือคนที่เกี่ยวข้องต่างๆประเด็นที่สองคือเรื่องของความยั่งยืนนะคะก็ถ้ามีผู้ประกอบการผู้อยู่หน้าหาดหรือหน่วยงานที่เกี่ยวข้องต่างๆได้มีการลงทํามีเสาน้ําส้มสายชูนะคะถ้าสามารถวางตะไคร่ป้องกันไอตัวแมงกะพรุนได้ก็จะเป็นประเด็นแล้วก็สร้างความเอ่อนอกจากนั้นแล้วเนี่ยยังเป็นฮัลโหลคุณยูเฮียมิฮัลโหลคุณยูเฮียมิเยสเยสเยสพรอฟวิคเอนเฮียร์ยูเอ่อไอแคนซีเดอะสกรีนไรน์นาวบัตยูแคนอัสต์เควชันไอทิงเดอะวิดีโอวิลคัมมิ่งซูนซาวอตวอตอิสเดอะเควชันอีฟ้าโอเคคุณยูซีมีนาวเยส Can you allow me to share the video now? Yes, please, p r o f Okay, would you please uh, let me share the video screen? Yes, p r o f you can play the video. In the mode that ready to share, can you allow me to share the video? Can you hear me? Hello. Yes, Prof. You can share the video anytime. Or if if you don't have time, you can. Can you hear me now? 
Yes, we can hear you, Prof. Lakana. We can hear you very clearly. Okay. Right now, I'm ready. Sorry for that. Uh, share video. I think right now it's ready. Sorry for this. Can you see the video now? Yes. Okay. But we cannot hear the sound. องค์ความรู้ที่ถูกต้องจึงเป็นสิ่งสำคัญที่นำไปสู่แนวทางรักษาและจะเฝ้าระวังป้องกันการบาดเจ็บและเสียชีวิตจากกระพุนพิษด้วยวิธีการปฐมพยาบาลเบื้องต้นอย่างถูกต้องและเหมาะสมช่วยยังไงที่จะไม่ทำให้มันรุนแรงจึงควรมีการจัดอบรมให้ความรู้เกี่ยวกับอันตรายจากแมงกระพุนพิษและการปฐมพยาบาลแก่ผู้เกี่ยวข้องไม่ว่าจะเป็นแพทย์พยาบาลหน่วยกู้ชีพอาสาสมัครสาธารณาสุขเจ้าหน้าที่รักษาความปลอดภัยบริเวณชายหาดครูและประชาชนทั่วไปที่พักอาศัยธรรมกินในพื้นที่เสี่ยงรวมถึงการสื่อสารความเสี่ยงนี้กับผู้มีส่วนได้เสียและภาคีเครือข่ายที่มีส่วนสนับสนุนในการเฝ้าระวังป้องกันพอมีการท่องเที่ยวขึ้นมาเนี่ยมันเหมือนว่าเราต้องรับผิดชอบมากขึ้นนะเราก็ต้องหาวิธีว่าเราจะช่วยเขายังไงเราจะป้องกันไม่ให้เขาโดนได้ยังไงบ้างอะไรเงี้ยหรือว่าถ้าเขาโดนแล้วเนี่ยเราจะมีวิธีช่วยเหลือเขาได้ยังไงถ้าสามารถอบรมต่อเนื่องจนคนรู้สึกให้เหมือนกับว่าแยกแมงกะพรุนที่ไม่มีพิษกับแมงกะพรุนไฟเนี่ยเมื่อก่อนเขาคิดว่ามีแค่สองเพียถ้าทําได้ประมาณนั้นก็น่าจะถึงเป้าหมายในระดับที่คนทั่วไปรับรู้แล้วก็แก้ปัญหาได้และสิ่งสําคัญอีกอย่างคือภาคีเครือข่ายตั้งแต่ระดับชุมชนจนถึงระดับประเทศและต่างประเทศในการร่วมกันเฝ้าระวังป้องกันและสร้างองค์ความรู้เพื่อแก้ปัญหาและผลักดันเข้าสู่นโยบายระดับประเทศต่อไปมันเป็นหน้าตาและก็ภาพลักษณ์ของประเทศนะคะในการที่เราจะสร้างระบบสาธารณสุขที่ดีเพื่อที่จะรองรับปัญหาตัวนี้ค่ะสิ่งที่อยากจะฝากนะคะมีอยู่2เรื่องด้วยกันนะคะเรื่องแรกก็คือเรื่องความรู้ที่ถูกต้องที่อยากจะให้เผยแพร่ไปสู่ไม่ว่าใครก็ตามที่ได้ชมเรื่องนี้หรือคนที่เกี่ยวข้องต่างๆประเด็นที่สองคือเรื่องของความยั่งยืนนะคะก็ถ้ามีผู้ประกอบการผู้อยู่หน้าหาดหรือหน่วยงานที่เกี่ยวข้องกับการได้มีการลงทำมีเสาน้ำส้มสายชูนะคะมีตะข่ายถ้าสามารถวางป้องกันไอตัวแมงกะพรุนได้เนี่ยก็จะเป็นประเด็นที่ดีอย่างยิ่งแล้วก็สร้างความยั่งยืนแล้วนอกจากนั้นแล้วเนี่ยยังเป็นผลดีต่อการท่องเที่ยวกับผู้ประกอบการต่างๆบางครั้งเนี่ยชีวิตของคนเราเนี่ยมันเท่ากับน้ำส้มสายชูเพียงขวดเดียวจริงๆโอเค any question sorry for this technical problem hello can you hear me Yes, we can hear you. Can I? Uh, we, but we cannot hear our moderator, Ifa. Where are you, Ifa? <laughs> Any question? I can answer now. <laughs> okay. Um. Uh. I will. I uh, currently while Ifa is trying to sort out her uh audio uh audio problem. Let me take over some of the question. Um, okay. Uh, it was posed by uh, Chi Ho. The, the question is: Is there any record of people in Thailand eating box jellyfish? Because in Sabah, that means in Borneo, it is commonly collected and eaten by the local coastal community. Um, you know what is your opinion on that, uh, Prof Lakana? Okay, we have case investigation and a few years ago, uh, the Eat box jellyfish, and they have uh have a symptom and problem because you know box jellyfish they have uh, nematosis, 
the stinging organism in the tentacle, but also in other part of the body of jellyfish. So uh, this is very rare case, and we recommend them not to eat it. Okay, thank you. Um, the next question posed by Ephraim from Philippines. He wants to know more about stinger nets. His question is, do you leave the stinger nets in the sea or remove them when the beach goers are gone? Oh, okay. It's, this one is, uh, even in other places, we not put the stinger nets all year round. Uh, only in the seasonal, because uh, the stinger net itself was damaged by uh, wave, you know, trash from anywhere. And it needs people to monitor and also uh, repair the stinger net. Uh, it also need to take care whether there any jellyfish inside the net. You know? So this one is regular work. Uh, if it is low season, uh, it's not uh, cost effectiveness. More, it's more expensive to maintain and need people to maintain. And people will be have a false uh, security. Uh, I think if you put the stink net, you need another two components, lifeguard or the one who can practice and help people around there. And second one is uh, uh, the, uh, the vinegar uh, pole or a station for vinegar. People can help them. That, uh, that is the important one, uh, not only Stingernet. Okay, um, that's another question also uh, pertaining to sting, Stingernet um, from Patrick. We have noted that in some case, even if the beach has the stinger net, the jellyfish still manages to go inside the nets. Is there a guideline on placing of nets? How big the holes or, or what is the height of the net? The simple thing is that the upper border is above the sea. The lower border attached to the floor of the sea. So you need to make sure that this net is really attached to the floor because even that the current will push it away and on the top it should be thicker and very stronger to hold the upper part of the net uh, like uh, you know the, the jellyfish cannot jump basically <laughs> because they have some string up like this and this is important in the middle between that you have to take care of the, the net no tear no nothing that is why I said if you put you have the big responsibility to check and monitor this. Oh, okay. And then there's one question posted uh, from Ong Han. Uh, he was asking, is wearing aqua long sleeves can prevent from jellyfish sting? Okay. Uh, this one is a good question. Even um, I used to be a scuba diver. Previously, I wear like a aerobic suit, you know, because the, the weight is expensive. Uh, as far as I know, it's based on your, your box jellyfish in your country. If the, the nematocysts, when they filing, they will have threat. So if this one, the one that filing is shorter than the thick of the cloth, it's fine. So it depends. In Thailand, uh, if you wear like this, uh, they have no no case that report by stinger net that penetrate. Uh, the stinger organism we call nematocysts penetrate beyond the the wetsuit. However, one case that we found, he wear the wetsuit during he take off the wetsuit, uh, the tentacle outside the wetsuit attached to his elbow. And he collapsed, you know, this is anesthesia and he had uh, cardiac anxiety increase and have to bring to the emergency room. So one of our clinical practice guidelines is that when you have the, the injure, do not take off the cloth, but cut it and put into the trash. Cut uh, all the cloth that they wear 
So it's, this one is two, two things. One, if it is attached outside, you can see it. And when you take it up, it may attach to your skin and start to filing, trigger the nematosis, organic uh, nematosis and filing. And this one is another question from the military. They want to know how thick of the cloth for the, for the Malin soldier to wear. This is one of another our uh, upcoming research to answer this question. <laughs> Hello? Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, thank you, yes. uh, Prof. Lakana. One question, uh, uh, last one for you from Dr. Ahmad Kaudon. Any campaign in Thailand to promote a, a bring vinegar to the beach campaign, the promotion of the public appropriate safety seeking behavior and appropriate health seeking behavior to the public? Do you have that in Thailand too? Uh, actually, we encourage and we make the community respond. So uh, this vinegar pot is, uh, is installed along the beach and the one who should take care or monitor or put into the vinegar is the villager or people who live along the beach. Uh, most of the time it's uh, from the resource or hotels. However, from, from, the, from, my, from other media, we still encourage because sometimes the vinegar ran out, or someone just take it out. So you just uh, carry the vinegar with you. Uh, sometimes it's good luck in Thailand because uh, along the beach in Thailand, we have many restaurants. Uh, many cases of us can find the vinegar from the restaurant because it is edible uh, vinegar type, four to six uh, acetic acid. And that is why the final way is that we just run to the rest, nearest restaurant and ask for vinegar, but yeah. most of the time I really encourage because it's the, the severe case take around two minutes, they collapse at the beach. So it's very fast. Uh, the vinegar should be installed near the beach. Okay, thank you, Prof. Lakana. I think uh, I have one uh, question on the anti-venom. This can be open to Prof. Lakana, Dr. Petre, or Dr. Maha. The question is from Rizman, is there other anti-venom available other than the develop, uh, than those developed from Chironex uh, Fleckery? Um, you know, and then uh, from IFA, you know, asking if, uh, about the anti-venom, for countries who have yet to obtain anti-venom, what should we be considering? Um, can I have um, any of the medical uh, experts here uh, um, sharing, the, uh, telling us about this question, answering this question, please? Uh, Dr. Okay. Patrick, you want to answer? Or Dr. Lakana? Yes, Dr. Lakana. Okay. Just uh, in my opinion, I, this anti-venom... Uh, as far as I know, it's a species-specific one. Second, it's expensive. Third, it should be applied uh, as fast as you can. So in practical, in Thailand, uh, right now we identify only one species. Uh, uh, and we have only eight dead kids. And the last two is like a few years ago. So we think, uh, we try to promote the vinica or prevention first. And entire genome is something that uh, all the medical have to know. Uh, right now, this box jellyfish uh, knowledge is not in the curriculum of um, medical, uh, not in the general in, in, in school of um, medicine. So it's very difficult in practical. Okay. Um, yeah, Patrick uh, or Dr. Maha, you want to add on to that question? Yeah, because in my country, no, uh, not anti venom available. And the preventive and promotive is very important, I think. Okay, uh, Patrick? I think he's his. Okay, um, can I add a little bit more? Uh, yes, please, uh, Prof. Lakana. 
According to the first aid, uh, based on our experience later on, we found that many severe seeing, cases can yeah, survive yeah, in with the vinegar, polling, and we really have, yeah. Yeah, you know, uh, like if what IFA has raised, you know, um, all of us are face facing the same issues of you no know, antivenom. Um, what is the best option we have? I, th I think based on my experience, if you are really uh, help in very, for first aid, appropriately, as far as I experience, many severe cases survive. If you can survive 10 minutes at the beach, most of you or most of the time you survive at the hospital. So first aid at the beach is important. And vinegar is important for pouring, but don't do any harm because if they scrub, scratch, or do anything that trigger the nematocyst, that one is a worst case, uh, more severe case. But once you survive from the beach, most of the time, almost, I not say 100, they survive. Okay. So focus on first aid, in my experience. I think first is important. Yeah, I, I know, because that's why um, this webinar brings in um, more experts from the medical side, because um, the science part, you know, uh, eventually I think we are, we are still looking into it on the biodiversity, on the distribution, and what causes the bloom. But what is immediate urgency is the medical knowledge and the awareness. So I would like, I would like, you know, since we do not, the time is not permit and it's, I feel it's a really good sharing. I, I would like to thank, uh, to take this opportunity to thank all the speakers for sharing their knowledge and experiences. It, it is really very insightful and very useful to all of us. I would also like to not forget Ifa. She's with us, but it's just that uh, our moderator, our dear moderator, she's with us. It's just that, um, you know, she couldn't get her audio activated. Uh, I would like to thank her also for a job well done in moderating the webinar. We sincerely hope that we can move forward together in learning more and creating more awareness among the public. Uh, feel free to go into um, uh, CIMEX website because we'll be sharing uh, information. If you have anything um, more to share, please do contact any of us. And um, I would, once again, would like to thank all um, the, the, the staff who is behind the scene, who is making all these things happen, uh, Sim and Nitya, who is with us. Um, and I would like to thank all the audience from all over the places who is attending the, the webinar with us. And it's really interesting to listen to all. And thank you all. And please do stay safe and take care. Thank you very much to everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you, all speakers. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah please stay safe, uh, Prof. Uh, Dr. Maha. All right, take care, everyone, and thank you very much for all the time being spent here. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. 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 bye.